Hey, welcome. In this video, I am going to be sharing the art that I have created in my messy, low pressure, anything goes sketchbook. It's a sea white of Brighton sketchbook, which has watercolor paper, it's portrait. And honestly, it's been a lot of fun to complete. So starting off, let's dive in. The first page, as per usual, I left blank. It's something that I'm working on, but you know, <laughs> we're not perfect. Following that, the very first pieces that I created are these two. And I actually created them while in a coffee shop. I think this is when I started embracing just leaving the house a little bit more and creating art in comfy coffee shops, cafes and so much more. And it was just such a wonderful, relaxing time. I, I feel like for the longest time I told myself that when I go out and I create art I should be urban sketching or I should be creating what I see but this was kind of the very first few times that I just let go of that and actually just allowed myself to create whatever I wanted outside of the house and it just made it such a wonderful experience. I love this piece it feels completely different to what I normally create and it was actually inspired by a few prompts that I created for my Kofi members so it is a video for Kofi members and if you're interested I'll leave it linked but essentially for this bit I wanted to explore colour it was a really fun piece to put together the aim of which was to select a color scheme and then really just experiment with different compositions and create like eight mini paintings in it although they are all small I used a range of different mediums from watercolor to gouache to neocolor twos I used my gold accents I used pencils and it was just really a way to try and um, I guess explore and not feel like I have to create a completely finished piece each time but instead creating little mini paintings and trying to get as much information from them as I could. So this is almost like the prelude to the abstract grids that come a few months later. Following that these two pieces were again created when I went to a coffee shop. At this point I wanted to try exploring changing my florals a little bit more and I guess you can kind of see that feeling of that in this piece as well. But in here I started changing the leaves ever so slightly. I started adding blossoms. I started changing the compositions a little bit more. I started changing the colours that I normally use. So this is actually made with some potter's pink. I just kind of wanted to shake things up a little bit more and to see what would happen as a result. Another change which perhaps seems not as big is that I went back to not having any backgrounds having spent quite a few months creating florals with backgrounds and again really fun and enjoyable time creating these. So oh this is fun so with this one I was essentially getting ready to do an art challenge for my Kofi members that was all around exploring colour and it is still one of my favourite art challenges or doses of inspiration to date. So if you don't know, Kofi is my art membership through which I share exclusive videos, art challenges, Zoom calls, we chat on Discord almost daily and so much more. So as part of that, I like creating like doses of inspirations or art challenges and sending out watercolour dot cards. If you're interested, then you are more than welcome to join and I'll leave that link down below for you. But as part of that, one of the challenges that we were doing was around exploring colour and as I was getting ready to create this challenge I really started delving into the different ways that I can explore colour, different colour palettes and this was part of it and it kind of led to days if not weeks of me just relaxing and swatching. This again was more so for Kofi highlighting like the common colours that I go back to time and time again and having a chat about that. Then this painting in Starbucks it's always helpful like I'm getting better at putting notes because otherwise I forget but again painting outside the house giving myself permission to paint what I feel comfortable painting with and also as you can see changing things up a little bit in my compositions in the colors that I'm using for my florals in the way that I'm doing my leaves also the brushes so this one feels quite different and it's because I was using a filbert brush to create these florals um, whereas this I used a round brush and I was a little bit more I guess expressive like I was moving my hand a lot more when I was doing this painting in particular because I really wanted to just try something new and try something different so I was um, 
giving the leaves slightly different shapes. I was adding more details. I was using different colors, um, even like granulating colors that I wouldn't normally use in my actual florals. I was using them as well. Um, and I was just trying to explore. And this is from a Kofi Zoom session. And as part of one of the art challenges that we did, we were focused on limited palettes. And I think actually this was part of that as well. So we were focused on limited color palettes. And thus I created this piece using a limited palette of gouache. This, we're fast forwarding to the future. So this is the penultimate piece that I created. But because I'd left this page empty, I kind of came back and filled it up. And as I created this in 12 minutes using watercolor and artist pit pens, as well as a fine liner. And honestly, I didn't know how I was going to tackle the reference, but I, I really liked the way the reference looked and it looked like the kind of picture that anyone could take. And I wanted to kind of take a bit of a step away from painting from highly curated perfectly polished pictures because I want to get in the habit of painting from my own pictures painting from the pictures of others painting from life and things aren't always going to have the perfect lighting and the perfect adjustments so this was a really really fun thing to do and we managed to do it in 12 minutes and it was like a lot of a lot of fun and you'll see a lot of the art that I created from that session in a second then this is from a live stream and you'll see there were quite a few pages from this live stream so here I had bought the Le Franc Bourgeois flash matte acrylics which look like this and essentially the reason that I bought them is because the their reputation is that they dry once they're dry they're completely they don't reactivate um, they are flat and thus you can layer on top of them and I've been advised that they are quite a good medium to layer pencils on top of Neocolor 2s and whatnot so I bought a few colors which are here and unlike my usual self as soon as I got them I um, took them out and I did a live stream swatching session a lot of fun I'll leave it linked for you if you're interested but it was just a really nice way to explore new art materials to try different color mixes and to see the kind of things that other people were curious about that perhaps I wouldn't have thought of and take it from there so these are the main colors that I got and then these are some of the mixes that I did and of these, I really like the Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I really like that mix. I love the mix of the Magenta and the Ultramarine as well. And I also like that I could make some more earthy, normal looking greens. Although I didn't quite like the Burnt Sienna and the greens added together. Like I thought that was too brown. <laughs> Then because once they dry, they are permanent and they can't be reactivated, I didn't want to waste any of it. So I created <laughs> this rainbow-esque effect page just purely so that I could use up all the paint that was in the palette. And then on this side, still as part of that live stream, we started experimenting with layering. So I compared the flash paints that I just bought with the Poskas, which are in this section. And I just started swatching on top of them using pencils, using different types of gold, using pens, using new color twos, using different brands of pencils, just everything and anything and comparing the two. So again, if you want to see the full results of that, then be sure to check out that full video still as part of that haul um, which was on the 10th of September 2023 I also bought these FW acrylic inks um, I only bought four colors because I hadn't tried it before and I wanted to dip my toes in it and this is the art that I created as a result and you can kind of see slowly slowly that a few months later or a few maybe not so long as it but a few months later the abstract grids would result would come forth and during the live stream using the acrylic inks I just wanted to explore abstract art a little bit see how they would work together how I could use them and I ended up creating these pieces that are completely different to what I would normally do but I really really enjoyed the process and I think that is why I then started leaning more into abstract art I also did lots of swatching sessions, as I've mentioned, um, as part of my Kofi. And in here, I was again tackling different ways that I explore color. One of them being like systematic, the other way just being like pick a color and mix it. So I systematically swatched out Hooker's Green with a whole bunch of different colors. So in Danthrone Blue, Cypress Bent Umber, Queen Gold Hue, um, 
Cypress Burnt Umber Plus in Dantherone Blue, Ultramarine, Sky Blue, on and so forth. Then I did a similar thing with the Quinopthalone Yellow, trying to mix greens using only Quinopthalone Yellow as my yellow in there. This is how I discovered that Phalo Green is actually Bay. Like the mixing capabilities of Phalo Green are like no other. Like, look, mixing greens mixing greens mixing greens it's just it's just wild and it's through this watching session that i actually fell in love with it and that phalo green won a position in my 2023 most used colors palette just because of the beautiful range of colors that i could create admittedly they are not the kind of olivey nice colors that i tend to go for a lot when i'm creating landscapes but they were just so beautiful that i couldn't deny them a place in my palette um everything from like turquoises to this mystery with magenta that i can't explain but it happens and to more natural looking greens although not as nice as aquarius green still respectable greens the range is just wild and then here i mix some aquarius green again with different kinds of colors to see which ones i like ultimately this exercise showed me that i love aquarius green on its own aquarius green with queen gold hue and aquarius green with cypress burnt umber the rest i didn't really feel like it made it any better by mixing this random page is me, is, was during a live stream and it was me showing the Kuretaki Gansai Tambi colours. And then here, again, during a live stream, someone asked me about how I paint leaves. So I painted some <laughs> to, to talk them through it. This piece is one of the rare double page spreads that I have here. Um, certainly florals, I think this is maybe like the third double page spread I have done. I really enjoyed it because I enjoyed the colour schemes, which I think were inspired by using the flower colour theory guide. So I don't think that I was looking at a particular floral bouquet and decided to create this. I think instead what happened is that I had been using this a few times to try and branch out and think about different compositions and think about different colors. And as a result, when I randomly sat and decided to paint this, it kind of filtered through and I used slightly different colors, slightly different elements. And I also did quite a lot of layering, which I like the results of. Then this is from a Kofi Zoom session that was all around creating different landscapes. I couldn't stick to time. <laughs> I couldn't do it. But it was a really, really lovely, lovely session. And as part of that, I created three landscapes. Started off with a gouache base and then went on top of the Neo Color 2s to add extra details. And I truly, truly love it. This was again part of that session and there are just so many little tiny bits that I fully enjoy looking back on. In particular, it's the extra details that I added on with the Neo Color 2s like here and choosing not to reactivate them, which I normally do. I think yielded some really nice and beautiful results and it makes me excited to go out and paint <laughs> it makes me want to like be in this painting sitting out looking at this and recreating this in my sketchbook i just really enjoyed creating it i really enjoyed painting and chatting with people it's almost like you can tell i really enjoy my live streams but there's something about having people talk back to you <laughs> that is equally even nicer this again was one of the pieces that I created from that Zoom session. Again, a little bit more simplistic compared to the others, but still, I really love the different colors. I love the brush strokes. I love the use of the Neo Color 2s. It's, it's fun. It makes me want to create. It makes me want to get some landscapes and get started. Then there's quite a big break in time, I think a few months, during which I start focusing on my other sketchbooks and my Caddy Fat book and whatnot. And then I decide to come back to it, <laughs> finally. And I attended one of TJ Marston's Patreon sessions and it was just so much fun. And in it, we did master studies and this was one of them and it was created using Neo Color 2s. And this is part of that Kofi Zoom session, which was on the 15th of March that I told you we do at the end. However, I ran out of pages, so I came back. So this is perhaps the, not the penultimate, third to last painting that I created using watercolors as well as artist pit pens. And honestly, in doing these sessions, and doing the previous art challenge a year ago again around fruits i discovered that i love using the artist pit pens i tend to use the 
brush nib. And I've just found under the pressure of time that one of the great benefits of it is that after you lay it down, maybe like less than a minute after, so like 30 seconds, you can kind of reactivate it a little bit and mix it. You can mix them by blending the two as well. But the fact that I could work on top of it 30 seconds, up to 30 seconds after laying it down, meant that I could really use it to create some really nice effects and really nice blends and then go over it with watercolour as well. A lot of fun. I've created a separate Kofi video just talking about it in more depth. Then this piece was, I think, from a few days ago and I essentially went to a park in the absolute freezing cold. My intention was to stay there and paint and draw for ages, but I was just too cold to do anything um, longer or more significant so I just looked at the main things that I noted that I wanted to remember and that was a willow tree and a duck and a log and some grass and I drew that down using my giant rainbow pencil then this happy accident of a painting was created because I dropped my FW ink <laughs> my purple lake which is one of my most used colors I dropped it all over my desk as you can maybe see around all over my book like everywhere and it's acrylic so once it dries it's permanent so as I was cleaning it up I didn't want to waste all that acrylic because I do love the color so I brought out random sketchbooks and started doing random paintings this painting is one of the said random paintings that I did at the time where I just created all of this with the acrylic inks and it made me think of two things. One, I've been using the acrylic inks primarily and purely for my abstract grids. And I have been enjoying using them like that. But I pretty much use them almost like with a pipette, put them down and keep it rolling. This forced me to use it almost like watercolour, almost like, you know, a paint from a palette. And it was a lot of fun. And I was like, why? I don't know why I haven't tried that before. I don't know why I haven't mixed them or explored doing that a little bit more and why I just use them as is. But this made me want to use them more. And then two, mixing them with watercolour, so much fun because I was able to then go back over with watercolour and this doesn't reactivate. So I was able to do a really nice background and it's just got me thinking about all the different possibilities. And then we go to the Zoom session that I did with my Kofi members that again I mentioned was around fruits. And if you are a Kofi member, you haven't seen it already, the replay is available. And I have also created a um, PDF full of references for you to use. This was a live stream actually that I did with my Kofi members. And in it, we were focused on fruits. I got some really cool references and we did some time studies. So this was done in five minutes, again, using the artist pit pens and watercolours. This was done in 12 minutes with the artist pit pens and watercolour. Just assume it's artist pit pen and watercolour, unless I say otherwise for the rest of this video. <laughs> then this, I really, really love these pairs and I created them in seven minutes, again, using artist pit pens and watercolours during that live stream and again created this piece which was so much fun and and took 15 minutes and I'm in awe of how much we were able to create and how much we were able to do in that limited period of time this one took 16 minutes if you are interested in seeing just how the artist pit pens can be reactivated and used with watercolour then that live stream is one that I recommend if you're a Kofi member because doing this background was a, a prime example of just how versatile it is. Then for the Happy Mail tier which is the tier that receives the watercolour dot cards as well as the extra zoom session we did a zoom session on the 15th of March and here we created this which is the Sharon fruit initially one minute but then I went back over it with pencil so I added 1.5 minutes. Um, then this again, initially I did it with artist pit pens and watercolours and then I went back over it with pencil so I added an extra three minutes. <laughs> then this was done in two minutes, this was a lot of fun, one minute and a continuous line drawing. Then this again, a lot of fun. It was seven minutes to do both. I got distracted, so I only had six and a half minutes. And I decided to use the first one and a half minutes to do a continuous line drawing of the three tangelos. And then I used the last five minutes to create a painting using the artist pit pens and watercolors of the same reference with the tangelos. And the references are available for Happy Mill members. And I will leave that link down below for you. And I've also created another reference pack for 
MVP tiers. So basically, there's plenty of freebies over there if you're a Kofi member. And then here, another reference, so a one-line drawing with the spectacles that Terry had mentioned. <laughs> and then the artist pit pens and the watercolor and this both of them I did in five minutes so I dedicated one minute to doing this and then four minutes to doing this and it's funny because it all initially started as a warm-up but I did start seeing the benefit of actually doing these small exercises before diving into the full thing then this again five minutes for both so I spent I don't know what these fruits are till date. I have no idea what they are, but I spent one minute doing this and then four minutes doing the painted version and added the Neo Color 2s there as well. And then for this version, which I really liked because of the vases, but, and also I, I love the finished results, but I remember being stuck as to how to tackle this in 10 minutes and what exactly to do. So I used the watercolor first, like I did the car shadows and kind of got the rough idea of the shapes. I then came back and added some more definition with the artist pit pens. And then finally, I added some extra textures with the Neo Color 2s and I just love the finished results. And then this piece here, the final one is one of my favorites, <laughs> certainly from that session. And it's essentially created with watercolors and the artist pit pens. But again, I just love the extra details with the dry brush, with the cloth, and just like how I've added all of that in. For all of these pieces, I was using my flat brush to create it. So I kind of got a bit more of an angular look and feel to it. Just it's it was the end of a really wonderful session and that my friends is my sketchbook tour <laughs> you are a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you are still watching by telling me whether you have a messy anything goes kind of sketchbook and what kind of things do you love creating inside it as well if you've enjoyed this video then you will definitely love this series of next ones where i share my other sketchbooks this one which i love and i am so so proud of and is one of my absolute favorite sketchbooks it definitely has more finished pieces because it's my etcher everyday sketchbook but it really allowed me to play and explore in it i hope that you enjoy it thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week bye